Why do I drive a lowered car? I think people have asked me that question more times that they've actually asked me what my name is. <laughs> so I thought I'd go over the reason why I drive a lowered car, but before I do, I kind of want to talk about some of the pros and cons of driving a lowered car. One of the benefits is a lowered center of gravity. With a low center of gravity, you get better stability, your car doesn't tend to roll as much, especially through corners. Speaking of corners, having a lowered car normally leads to better handling. So I know that's not always 100% true, but as a general kind of rule, the lower the car, the kind of the better the handling. Now, of course, if you start going crazy with the hell of flush fitments and all that stuff, yeah, you're throwing handling completely out the window, but there's a fine line between a lower suspension and better handling. I mean, that's why you see most of these race cars sit a lot lower than regular, you know, daily driven kind of cars. And you also kind of get better aerodynamics, so air tends to travel both over and underneath the car. If you can avoid as much turbulent air going underneath the car, it improves aerodynamics. Pretty simple stuff. So, so far, all good stuff, but unfortunately, there are some negatives as well. So, first things first, because your suspension can't move as much, your ride quality will just suffer. You're gonna feel every single bump, every single indentation in the road, and some people like that, some people don't. Most people, I would say, don't. With a harsher ride quality, not only are you suffering, your car is actually suffering as well. So, all those joints that are connecting the suspension tend to wear out a lot quicker the suspension itself the the shocks the struts whatever you have tends to wear out the wheels the tires everything kind of suffers because the suspension doesn't have as much absorbing power as it used to you're also going to be scraping just anything and everything underneath the car depending on how low your car is my c5 corvette is actually pretty low to the point where it has this air dam this deflector underneath that kind of helps scoop up the air into the radiator but unfortunately because the car sits so low it kept hitting on every single surface that I just had to remove it. If your car is too low certain things are going to suffer I mean especially scraping underneath the ground if any kind of wire becomes a little even slightly loose for example sometimes you'll see oxygen sensor wires kind of dip down a little bit over time you're going to be hitting that scraping that you may cut it and you may cause some issues that are kind of unintended and that you wouldn't have if you were just to drive a normal height car and if you're one of those people that really cares about the longevity of their tires well i mean you could just kind of throw that out the window especially if you have brought the car down so far that the lower control arms kind of flex up a little bit causing the tires to flex inwards a little bit that you're going to be having that uneven wear on the inside of the tire majority of the time so the lower car will tend to wear the tires out more quickly on the inside so especially if you're keeping the car for a long time if that's your daily driver you're, you're gonna find yourself replacing tires probably more frequently than not unless you can get them online properly with the lowering setup that you actually have so even after everything i just showed you and everything i talked about why do i still drive lowered cars i mean there's just no benefit to it this car, uh, my C5 Corvette, is so low that my wife actually has a new nickname for it. It's not the gas guzzler, it is the floor guzzler. So on this side over here, my floor is just ever so slightly higher than on the right side. And as you can see, I don't have a nice checkered pattern anymore because this car has eaten up the floor quite a few times already. As a matter of fact, I ran out of tiles, so now I'm just missing that tile right there. And to tell you the truth, I don't even want to replace it right now. And yes, that is with me using all these boards and everything, trying to get into this side. Why do I have this car on the right side of the garage? Well, I'm working on it currently on my C6. So when my son gets out of the house, I don't want him squeezing by the car i just want him either coming out of this area over here or through the middle but i don't want him messing around with this car too much especially because it's on jack stand so how low is my c5 corvette well just like every other normal person i have a medium-sized jar of nutella over here to illustrate it and if i go all the way down about right there you can see that it comes out to about half the size of this Nutella jar. As a matter of fact, 
here's my fist and here's the bottom of the car and I can't put it underneath. I mean, not even four finger lengths. I mean, I cannot even slide my arm all the way underneath here because the car is so freaking low. And over here I have my mostly stock STI, which does not have any kind of or modification, but thankfully the suspension is sporty enough that it's not driving me completely nuts. So if we look at the, the gap, there's about two finger lengths, which I definitely want to reduce ASAP. To me, I can do whatever I want to the car. It just doesn't feel like I upgraded the car whatsoever unless the car just sits lower than factory. I would say majority of the cars that come out there, their suspension is not tuned for car enthusiasts. It's, it's meant more for economy. And even the sportier suspension like you have on my STI still have a little bit of a gap. And that gap just needs to be eliminated so that I can feel like I actually did something to the car. I mean, I can upgrade the engine. I can upgrade the interior. I mean, I can do all of these things. Unless the car is just sitting lower, it just doesn't look right. I mean, wheels, tires, suspension. That's always how I approach it. SDI is a little bit different just because I like the wheels and tires so much and the right quality and the right height is almost perfect that I haven't jumped on that as my first kind of upgrade. Let's tell you the truth, at certain angles, it looks perfect, but it's gonna have new suspension pretty soon. And I finally decided, I was kind of debating whether to go with springs or coilovers, and I decided to go with springs, primarily because of the Corvette. Corvette has coilovers, and you know, the, the side of the garage that I just showed you guys on is, sits a little bit higher, and all I have to do is just unwind, you know, just raise it up ever so slightly. I have the adjustability, but I refuse to do so. I'm going through tile after tile, <laughs> just because I want the car to sit low enough where it just just looks perfect to me. So I'm using all these extra things, which just doesn't make sense to most people, like boards and all this thing, just to be able to drive my car in and out of the garage, and yet I'm still refusing to adjust the coilovers. <laughs> so that's why I decided to go with springs. With the springs, you have limited play. So like, I think some of the moderate springs, it's like 0.8 inches in the front, maybe like an inch in the back or something like that, just kind of lower it and kind of level it out. So I think with about an inch drop, you're looking at just kind of perfect ride quality, ride height. It looks like it's been modified and I'm not going to go crazy like I would if I had coilovers. I know myself and that's the first thing I would do is just oh, let's lower it down even more, you know? I know there's plenty of you guys out there that are exactly like me because I see you guys on the streets all the time. <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time.